Oh my god. Okay. So cotangent. And this has to do. Yeah, okay. Cotangent looks like this. Zero to pi. Does anyone remember what it looks like in the middle here? Tangent looks like x cubed, remember? <laughs> Cotangent is good. Yeah, so it's going to go like this. And then it's going to repeat it, yes? So as I approach pi from the left, what are my outputs doing? As I get closer and closer to pi from the left, what are my outputs doing? Approaching negative infinity. What is this doing? This is a very silly question I'm asking right now. What is this doing as x goes to pi? This is going to? No, no, come on, don't overthink it. As x goes to pi, x is going to? I love you guys, it's going to pi, right? So isn't this pi times, what did we just say this is going towards? Negative infinity. Don't say it's equal to this, by the way. This is sort of like the form it's in, pi times negative infinity is the form it's in. So what's the answer? Why did I do the whole problem? I don't know. Negative infinity. So a finite number times negative infinity is freaking negative infinity. Unless that finite number is zero. So again, how do you do this problem? It didn't say you're allowed to use your graphing calculator. Do not use your graphing calculator if it doesn't say you're allowed. If you want to get practice for the kind of shit I'm going to ask. You've got to know what these things look like. That's a big thing about pre-calculus and true. If you took 175 and 170, you know what trig functions look like. You're supposed to, right? So a lot of these problems are just, do you remember what these things look like? If you know what they look like, you know the limits of certain places. So like, for example, yeah, go ahead. How do you do negative infinity? Oh, so again, we know what cotangent looks like. Cotangent, all right. Looks like a inside out uh, It looks like a tangent that's just been reflected. What's this? Oh, okay. Um, Asymptotes are for the graph. That's why pre-calculus is pre-calculus. Because you should be able to do this kind of problem relatively easy because you know what the picture looks like. Yeah. I know it's approaching like on the right side of the arrow, but what if it was like on the other side? Oh yeah, so what's it doing on the other side? If I repeat this picture, as I approach pi from above, what are my outputs doing? Infinity. Positive infinity. So my answer would have been positive infinity. Yes. Um, Yeah, yeah, so if you're going, no, 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 what was it? No, it's not going to infinity. This was the limit as x goes to pi, right? Yeah. So if I wanted to make a table to investigate x cotangent x, my table would be like, what is pi roughly? 3.14157, blah, blah, blah. So my table could be like 3, 3.1, 3.14, 3.141. 3.1415. So I'm approaching pi from the left. You guys with me? And then I can see what my now. If you did that on this problem, that's not good because did it say to use a table? You only make a table if it says to use a table. Okay. All right. So this problem goes all about do you know what the graph looks like? So for example, if I ask you what's the limit of this? Plus Why must I put the plus sign there? And if you can answer that question, you should be able to answer this question itself. Yeah, why must I come from the right? Because 
The input of natural log has to be greater than zero. I like it. Am I ever letting x equal zero? Am I ever letting x be a negative number? No. Because I'm specifically coming from the right. You guys with me? So that's why that question must be like that if I want to investigate zero. Now what's the answer? No. What's ln look like? Can you get all ln in the air? Does anyone? I see a few people doing it. Some other people are being very honest with me, looking me in the eyes and going, can't do that shit, we're shit. I'm like, all right. Yeah, so it looks like this. Yes? So it's got an asymptote at zero, goes through one, and then it's one of the slowest growing functions ever. It's really fast here, it grows crazy fast, and then it goes, I'm tired. Right? Let me stop for a minute. The more you know the shape of functions, the easier many of these limit questions will be. Because they point to stuff like asymptotes and so forth. You guys kind of with me? Negative infinity. Because it's, it's like, so now I'm going backwards. I'm going towards zero from the right. So what is my, what are my outputs doing? Getting stupid, getting stupid big negative, right? So negative infinity, that's the answer. Did I have to do any algebra? Did I have to do any work, really? No, because you did all the freaking work in pre-calc. Right? You investigated what these functions look. Now that we know, this problem doesn't require much work. So how do you show work? Because I wore a shirt that said, show your work. Um, I can't remember what word for you guys. You draw a little picture. Right? And then you go, negative infinity. All right, tears, little tears. All right, that's all you gotta do. The more you know, the less you have to do. That's true in mathematics all across the board. So somebody out there is going, I don't know much, our shit. Our. So you don't remember much. Not that you don't know much. You don't remember much. You got to dredge your buck up out of the memory. <laughs> I like some of you guys' facial expressions right now. Yeah. No, so, so again, I understand that a lot of us haven't taken math in a while, or maybe you took it and it didn't really sink in and it's gone. Come see me. Take my 180L. A lot of you guys are taking that. It's a little, I think I told you all about it. So that's open if you want to take that. We, we do prerequisite stuff that's going to lead into some stuff we're doing. Or if you don't have time for that, then come see me. Go see a tutor. If you don't have time for that, find YouTube channels. Yeah, yes? In terms of what we just did. So, yes. Yeah, when they come up, you can always ask, and we can review what things look like. But the more you know what things look like, the easier many of these questions are. Yeah. Oh, uh, 12.30 to 1.50. Yeah. Monday, Wednesday. So it's like earlier today. Yeah. Sure, okay. I have two spots open, but I'll let more people in. All right, anything else from homework stuff? Yes. Chapter one, number 20, I just want to clarify. Oh, is that one somebody you asked earlier? That you just find the midpoint and then you use that for This here? Find the midpoint, right? No, you don't have to find the midpoint. Can you guys find the line that goes between negative 2, 2 and negative 1, 0? Yeah. What two things do you need for the equation of a line? Y slope. slope. And if what if you don't have the line or so? Any point, correct? What are the two equations of a line that we normally use? I'll do one because I don't want to hear a bunch of say this. So you all know MX plus B. BMX. I think whoever made this liked to bike. Right? MX plus B. What's the other one? Y Like singing a song you don't know too well. So you could always use this one. You could find a slope and then plug in the x, y of a point you know and solve for b. Are you guys with me? I know some of you guys know how to do that. That was on the review. Good. Yeah, I think so. So like, all right. So this problem, this specific problem, is a little more complicated because what was it? Twenty. Yeah. 
Do you know what kind of what kind of function this is? It's a piecewise function. Piecewise. I love it. Yeah, not pennywise. We're not talking about things floating down here, but piecewise function, meaning it's defined in pieces. So one piece, not the pirate key, but one piece goes from what to what? Between what values of x? Negative 2 to negative 1. Yeah. And... The other one goes from negative 1 to 1. Beautiful, because the top half of the circle was centered the origin and radius 1. So if the center is 0, 0, how far down does it go? Radius 1. To negative 1 and to 1, yeah? Okay. Do you guys know the equation of a circle? Unit circle. Let's start there. What's the equation of the unit circle? Yes. I wore the shirt so I could give you the answer on my shirt. Yes. The equations of love. Um, so, yes, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I love it. So, for the unit circle, why am I talking about the unit circle? Because what's the unit circle mean? One. Radius of one. So, the radius of one, x squared plus y squared equals? 1 squared, which is 1. Can we stop for a minute? If I want a radius of 5, it would be x squared plus y squared equals 25. That's crazy. Isn't that cool? Okay. I've already, so there's half the answer. The problem with that is it says the top half. x squared plus y squared equals 1. Isn't that the whole circle? That's the whole circle, yes? Yes. How do I get just the top half? I like all of it, but it's not quite right. So help me out. Um, is a circle a function? Yep. Why is a circle not a function? It doesn't pass the vertical line test. Is there an input that has more than one output? Yes. Shit, yeah. So do you see why they had to restrict it to either the top or the bottom half? If it was the left or right half, that would still not be a function, correct? Right. So how do I eliminate this part? Well, can anyone tell me what's true about y down here? It's negative. What's true about y up here? It's positive. So if I solve this for y, I can pick the positive part, because that'll be the top half of the circle. Do you guys see that? If the y is positive up here and negative down here, what do you get when you try to solve this for y? Y equals square root of negative x squared plus 1 squared. So when I take a square root, what do I need to put? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Do you now understand why there's a plus or minus there? Yeah. If, it didn't have, if it didn't have the plus and the minus, I wouldn't get the top and the bottom half. Which one am I going to pick for this problem? Positive. Positive, because it told me the top half. OK, I like it. And now all you got to do is figure out this, the line between negative 2, whatever it was, negative 2, 2, and negative 1, 0. So get the slope, figure out what b is. So what, is a, what does a piecewise function look like? If I define it, uh, f of x equals, what's a piecewise function look like? It looks like this, for example. You see how it's defined in pieces. When is my input going in here? When is my when am I going to use this? When my input is negative. negative. And when am I going to use this one? When I'm zero or positive. You guys see that? So your answer should end up in this form. Okay. Yes. If Question. Yeah, totally. It specifically for that segment. Yeah, so you can define right. this is where you limit it. So what was the, the one point was negative two two, yeah. and the other point was negative one zero. So you want x to be between. Negative two and negative one. So you can just identify that. Yeah. So how do you limit where things? So I could have done this instead. I could have said 
negative one less than x less than zero, then this is a line only between negative one and zero. Okay, I like it. Why do these things exist? <laughs> Sorry, I love the question. Because can you imagine a time, we have liftoff, we have liftoff of this missile, this missile, and then it hits something. Bah! And then it goes offline somewhere. So did the trajectory equation change? Is it still the same missile? Did it just bounce off of something? Yeah. yeah. So therefore, to define the function that represents the trajectory, I need two pieces. One before this time, and one after this time. Does that make sense? So that's why piecewise functions exist, because real things in real life change motion. So I need to identify what times they do and identify what the trajectory is. Maybe, I love you guys. Y'all look so like, what the shit? Have you guys not worked with piecewise functions much? Is that what's happening? Can you guys ins ins say, say hello? A little bit. Uh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> I want to make sure that nobody told me you had a room full of mutes. I don't know. It could happen. Okay, so real quick. Um, So if I had to graph this, this might help out with this problem. Let's see. Um, what do you got, Jim? Sure. Um, is that a J or a semicolon? Oh, that's a semicolon. Okay. Yeah. J would be weird. Um, the mic's like it's all weird. I don't know. It doesn't matter, Jeff. Just let go of it. How the hell are you gonna graph this thing? If I want you to graph this, how would you graph this? So, if you have a graph the top when uh, x is less than negative. Yeah. Point. So a smart, a pretty smart idea is to make a little table of values. But what inputs am I gonna use? Minus two. Negative one point one nine. No, don't go crazy. You ready? You you ready? Negative two negative two. I'm going to put negative two in, yes. But I'm going to remind myself that I'm not allowed to. Why do I Why do I have to put negative two in? Because I need to know where to put the limit. Uh, open. open circle. I need to know where to put the open circle, yes. No, you don't have to be that precise. This is not a limit question. This is not a limit question. This is just a graph the damn function question. Do you guys know what shape this is? Parabola. Parabola. Right? So I don't have to be so, don't put 1.18 or something silly in there. Just put negative 3. Why negative 3? Because I have to use less than negative 2, yeah? Negative 4, that's enough. I know the shape of it, don't I? You guys kind of want to think. Real quick, where's the vertex of this? 0 and negative 4. Yeah, because x squared is 0, 0, and all this did is shift it down. So all I need is a few points, and then I know it's going to have, well, from your perspective, this shape, yes? because they didn't quite make it to the vertex, so I know what shape it's gonna have, I just need a few points. Do the same thing for four x plus one. When is that valid? When x is greater than negative two. Yeah, so what kind of inputs am I gonna use? Negative one, one, one. Put negative two in there. Yeah, I can use, well, this time I don't have to put a little parentheses around it, because I'm allowed to use negative two, right? Yeah. I'm gonna just do, yeah, I'll do Jeff. Negative two, negative, no, negative three. Negative one. You're awesome, Jeff. You guys with me? Because it's a freaking line. I only need two points for a freaking line. Yes? Okay. So if I put negative two in here, what's negative two squared minus four? Zero. What's negative three squared minus four? Five. Five. What's negative four squared minus four? Four. Twelve. What's negative eight plus one? Six. Negative four plus one? That's right, kids. And then you just have to plot the points, connect them. The mistake people make is they make too much of the picture. It should only be a parabola up until negative two, right? Up until negative two. Then the line takes over. So let's see. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. How far am I going? Yeah, there we go. One, two. So at, I'm going to make this scale. What's a good scale for this considering? What do you guys think? Two, four, six, eight, four, four, eight below. 
I'm going to do between those, 3, 6, 9, 12. So then negative 2 is 0, but what do I put there? Yeah, open circle. Negative 3 goes to 5. Negative 4 goes to 12. And there's my parabola. Very slight curve. Then I put negative 1, negative 3. Up right there, sweet. And negative 2, negative 7. And there's my line. That's a piecewise function. Is it a function? Yes. Why? Does it pass because as the... Because it passes the vertical line. So if I took this line too far, is it a function? No. Because then it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So just make sure if it's a piecewise function, it better pass the vertical line test. Don't make the whole parabola. Stop where it tells you to stop. Otherwise, it's not a function. Yeah. So, just a question out of curiosity. If it was like if I could close the dot at two, negative two, zero, then it wouldn't be. Possible. Beautiful, exactly. Because then it wouldn't, if both of these were closed, is it a function? No. No, because no, it doesn't pass a vertical line test. Yeah. So if I put the inequality equal to here, this would have been closed, this would have been open. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Could they both be open? Yeah, right. Yes. If I just wouldn't have put an equal sign in either one of them, then they would have both been open. Yeah. Okay. I like uh, it. So, this thing is not uh, affirmative. Say again. So, this thing is not affirmative. This is a function all day. If this circle was filled in also, it would not be a function. If I extend this line further, it would not be a function. If I extended this further, it would not be a function. Yeah. Yes. So I'm just going to make sure the first part of the piecewise function at the top where it's. Um, oh, yeah, should keep going. Is yeah. it an arrow? Yeah. Should be an arrow, yeah. I think I'd try to make a little arrow, but let me make okay. it better. Yeah. Arrows in both directions. Yes. Sorry for the circles. Is it one greater than, just greater than zero? Oh, or uh, than what did I put that? It's not greater than this, it's equal to. Are you talking about the problem? The range to, to cut the top half of the circle. The plus and the minus. Yeah, yeah, so I just picked the positive one. Oh, yeah. I That's know. the top half, yeah. Oh, you don't need yeah. to. Like, I'm not shading something. Right in. No, no. Oh, the minus would be the bottom half yeah. of the circle. And what is this? So, the top half of the circle goes from what to what? Negative one to one, because I know it's radius one. Okay. So that's what would go here next to the circle. Okay. Give that a try. Anything else from homework stuff? What's happening Wednesday? Quiz. Quiz. You guys said it in the right way. Quiz. What's it on? <laughs> I appreciate that. One through two. Oh, oh, so often the jackass is like a class, but I like to find one. I, no, I appreciate jackasses are good. So quiz on chapter one and two, two. Okay. So what we're going to do, who needs this handout from last time? I think we did this side, yes? Anybody need this copy, this handout from last time? I already have one. And you didn't bring yours. I'll see if I have an extra one. Oh, anybody need this handout? Hold on. Here, else good. You got it. You got it. So last time we did this whole cycle. 
So guys, if you were absent last time, just watch the video. And or come see me. I think we did these also, didn't we? Yes. Did we? Yes. All three of them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm teaching another class, the, the 180L, that where we do stuff like this, so it's hard for me to remember which class we did it. We did not do this one. No, we did not do this one. Okay. All right. Um, this is related to stuff from section 2.1. So guys, real quick, just to make sure everybody's with me, if I ask you this question, let me say this question. Let's say I ask you this question, but I say investigate this using a table. How will you construct the table? Put anything as little as possible greater than zero, so like zero point zero. Why greater than zero? Because it's approaching zero, so I want to see if I'm It's approaching zero. zero from what side? Doesn't Both sides. Side. Doesn't say. So what, give me specific inputs you would put into your table. Zero, 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 one. They'll start there. Negative one. Zero, or, all right, zero. you can start at negative one, zero. negative point five, negative, negative point one, negative point oh one, yes? Yeah. You need to establish a pattern. And then you'd also go from the other side. One, point five, point one, point oh one, point oh one. You, you guys with me? Just like the other side of this handout, we did an example like that. Let me stop for a minute. So, if I have a limit question by itself, I can then construct a table if it asks me to, to investigate what the limit is. Will I be right all the time when I do that? No, because I am making a guess based on my limited research into it. You guys with me? Are there any functions you've ever seen that kind of go crazy? Yeah, if you make like, so why would this make it go crazy? If I did sine of 50x, who remembers why that would make it go insane? Because it's strange. How do you figure out the new period? Who remembers? You're all like, damn you with your trick shit out of nowhere. Sorry? Divide the period by 50. Yeah, so the, the period of sine normally is 2 pi. You divide that by 50, so it's pi over 25. So every pi over 25, it's doing a whole cycle. So that thing is going, wheel, 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 right? So if I wanted the limit of that function, I'd have to get stupid close because a little tiny step, and I'm like through a few cycles, I don't know. So I gotta get really close. Most of the functions we're gonna work with will be like radio waves, like, oh, they're like whales, ooh, ooh, right? Not like cicadas, you know, okay. The cicadas are out somewhere, anyway, sorry. We don't have to worry about it here. Um, you guys know what cicadas are? Yeah. Or There's like 17 year cicadas and 13 year cicadas that are both coming out at once that hasn't happened in 200 years. I can't remember what state, but it's not this one. So let's do like this. So is that cool? For this function, you could make a table and you just get close to zero from both sides and you try to see the pattern. And we all understand we're just human. We'll get close, but sometimes we might be wrong. So the whole point of chapter two, at the end of chapter two, we're gonna develop a method so that we can always be right. Go T. Or you know, if you do the work right. So this guy is more than that. This guy is not just investigating a given limit. Is there any limit statement in here anywhere? No. No. So why do I keep talking about limits related to this? Because we're trying to approximate the slope. And what was the whole, the whole point of calculus? The whole reason I do this kind of backwards is because I want you to understand what a limit is, what it accomplishes, and then we come back to this question. Because this is the question we started with. How do I find the slope at a single point when the slope process needs two points? You guys with me? If, if the question is, what is the slope of this function at this point? Algebra says, I don't have a freaking clue because I need two points to get the slope, right? So what does it look like I'm doing there? What are my inputs doing in, across that whole first part of the problem? What are my inputs doing? Getting closer to three. 
I'm letting my points get closer to three from both sides. Okay. So one point is three, one. Are you guys all with me? That is definitely one of our points is three, one. The other point we're going to use is going to be the point we get from an input of 2.5. So let's do the first one together. Somebody help me out. Yeah, you just plug it in here. So what I want to know is what is the rest of this point? So then I've got the other point, so then I can get the slope, correct? So in section 2.1, I think I assigned like six problems or something. They basically are all this. There's slight differences in the way that they give you the information, but they're basically all this. Can somebody help me out? If the input is 2.5, what's the output? 1.3 repeating or 4 thirds? I love it. So I'm going to put down here uh, 4 thirds. I'm a weird math person. Does that answer the question though? No. No. So you're like, good job, Jeff. But why did I have to do that first? Because it's asking for a slope, and I don't know what the freaking other point is. Now I do. Can you guys, what am I going to get the slope between this point and 3, 1? So what I'm doing is this function looks roughly like this. So what I'm doing is I want to know at 3, 1, what is the slope there? So I'm going to take the point 2.5, 4 thirds, and I'm going to get a slope between those two. Then I'm going to take the slope 2.9 and get the slope between those two. As I get closer, the slope I get becomes closer and closer to the slope at 3, 1. Let me say all that again. So I want the slope at 3, 1. That's neat. Perfectly placed. So I'm going to get the slope between 2.5 and 3. That's not the correct slope, correct? Correct. Then I go to 2.9 and 3. That's closer. Then I go to freaking 2.99 and 3. Now I could keep going and go slightly insane, but then I go on the other side and I try to see if I can see a pattern. All right, let's try this. How do you set up the slope between these two points? Okay, one way to do it is 4 thirds minus 1. What is the slope formula from algebra? Y2 minus 2 minus Y1 over X2 over X1. Or X2 minus X1. We're ready for the recital. So, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. The 2 and the 1 bullshit just means subtract the same order. If you don't subtract the same order, you get the wrong sign. So it does not matter where shit which point you call the second point, which point you call the first point, it's the same stupid line, correct? So if you did one minus four thirds, that's fine, as long as the bottom's correct. So, so I was told four thirds minus one, so we've established a direction to go. Four thirds minus one, so what better go on the bottom? 2.5 minus three. That's all the white, the two and the one, that's all those subscripts mean is, Subtract them in the, right, in the same order. So if you did 1 minus 4 thirds, you better freaking do 1 minus 2.5. 1, Jeff. What is it? 3. One. If you did 1 minus 4 thirds, you better do 3 minus 2.5. That's bad. What's 4 thirds minus 1? 1 third. And what's 2.5 minus 3? And how do you divide by half? Multiply by two. So I get negative two thirds. Or roughly negative six point six seven, right? Yep. Point six six seven. Okay. That doesn't tell us anything by itself. So you guys try to do two point nine. Oh wait. Try to do everything we just did, but do it for two point nine. And I gave so much room on this paper to do it. So I'm sorry. Do another sheet of paper. Maybe.
mistake students make is you round too much. Watch what you can do. When you plug a 2.9 in, 2 over 1.9, 2 over 1.9, it becomes 20 over 19. You multiply top and bottom by 10, right? This way you don't have to write a billion decimals or something. And you don't have to round too much and get the wrong answer. Did anyone get a big old decimal answer when you did that? Yes, what'd you get? 1.0, one point. One point blah, 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 it keeps going, yeah? yeah? This contains the infinite number of decimal points in it. So if you want to write an infinite number of decimal points, just write the equivalent fraction of one exists. And there it is! How do you write all these two? Say again? Like, let's say you get a decimal, how do you turn it? No, you don't, you don't get a decimal first. You just don't get the decimal in the first place. So again, this is 2 divided by 1.9, correct? Yeah. What do you get when you multiply top and bottom by 10? 20 over 19, there you go, okay. So now I get to get the slope, how do I get the slope? 20 over 19 minus 1. See how these two are always going to be the same, yes? Because that point stays the same, 3, 1 stays the same. 20 over 19 minus 1? Over 2.9 minus 3. So now you can make it a decimal. Now you're not going to around too much. When you throw this into the calculator, your calculator does not have eyeballs, thank God. That would be weird. They donate your eyes to science and they install it in the TI 3000. They become self aware, all this kind of shit. Skynet, we're all dead. Put parentheses around the top, parentheses around the bottom, because it doesn't know. It doesn't have eyeballs. Somebody tell me what you get. Tell me what you get. Say again, sorry. Like, let's say it has four decimal places and multiply it by 100. Oh, you mean like I got 2 over 1.9? 1 1.98. 1 yeah, if you had 1.98, I would multiply by 100. Whatever I got to multiply, it would clear the decimal. Yeah. Anybody want to tell me what they got? Negative 10 19. Negative? Say again? Negative 10 19. Sure, 10 19th, which is also known as. Negative 0 0.5263157895. Sure, we'll see that. We'll approximate. Okay. If you round too early in a problem, it'll throw your answer off. If you round at the end, you're fine. So now if I do it for 2.99. This is maybe this, you got a little ahead of me. So now I'll get 2 over 1.99. So I get 200 over 199. Right? Mm -hmm. So the funny thing about this, I keep doing the same thing. I just keep doing the same thing. It's all I go insane. So then I get 200 over 199 minus 1 over 2.99 minus 3. I can see 1.31, and I can see the point that I just made of 2.99. Yes. So just to show you what this looks like. By the way, if you need to borrow a cup, I got some up here. Uh, just need your ID if you do that. So I do parenthesis 200 divided by 199 minus 1, parenthesis divided by parenthesis 2.9, yeah, 2.99 minus 3. Chippo! Negative 0.503, roughly. You had to take a guess right now, what'd you say we're approaching? Negative 0.5. I would say negative 0.5, yeah. See how it's a big jump and then we slowed way down? So it looks like it's probably negative, slowing down to negative 0.5. So then if we do the other side, the same kind of stuff is going to happen. Let's just do 3.01, just to kind of cut to the chase here. 3.01. When I plug that in, I'm going to get 2 over 2.01, which is 200 over 201. So then 200 over 201 minus 1 over 3.01 minus 3. And you do 
this again. Negative 0.498. So this is kind of reinforcing our thought, right? So I'm going from this side and from this side. And it looks like from both sides it's approaching negative 0.5. So what we just figured out is that at the point 31 on this graph, bless you, the slope is roughly negative one half. If I drew a line at that point on a much better picture of it, the slope would be negative one over two. Okay, yeah, I like it. Oh, that's by the way, that's part two. Okay. So that's the kind of stuff you're going to see in section 2.1. Much more computational examples of the stuff we've been doing graphically. Bless you. Thank you. Okay, so um, any leftover questions from that? Just to show you, I want to show you what the homework looks like if you haven't looked at it. Section 2.1. Let's see, can I remember any of these that I assigned? This and for two. No. Two, three, oh, two? Okay. Eight. So number two gives you a table of values. Find the slopes. Now, something I haven't said yet. Two things I might not have said yet. Well, one thing is the tangent line, so given some picture, some graph. If I want to slope there, that's the tangent line is the line that has the same slope as the function at that point. It's the line that comes in, hits it once, and then keeps going. That's the tangent line. A secant line would be, if I pick two points around that, the secant line would be that line, the line that goes through two points around the point I'm curious about. Now, what's really neat is tangent and secant are both trig words. Why are they being used in this case? Oh, well, remind me, what's tangent? What's the basic definition of tangent? No, more basic than that. Y over X. Y over X is the tangent of theta. What's slope? Basic definition of slope. Change in Y is over change in X. So, okay, that's why we call that the tangent line, because it's the line that has the same slope as the function itself. Secant line gets a little bit weirder, but we'll get there. Okay. Um, so looking back at this, it says find the slopes of the secant lines corresponding to the given intervals. Okay. Do you know the point zero comma something? So this is the intervals of t, yes? So what's the point zero comma what? 34. Yeah, 34, 38. And then I got the point 40 comma so all this problem is asking you to do is, what's the slope between those two points? I like it. So each one of these is the same. 0, 40, 10, 20, 20, 30. Now this is all about, just to make sure, this is starting at three o'clock. Do you see how these two are on either side of 20? Okay, so if I want to estimate the slope by averaging the slopes of two secant lines, can see maybe which ones they're talking about. We'll see. Okay. So that's the only one I think that's a little bit more different than this one sounds exactly like the one we just did. This is exactly like the one we just did. Yeah. Um, and so are the rest of them, to be honest. The rest of them are, are pretty much exactly like the one we just did. So here you get in there and try those out. So we got 2-1 is the table method, very computational heavy. 2-2 two, two is the, 2-2 um, two, two and 2-3 two, are the graphical way. 2-2 two, two I think is the graphical way, 2-3 is the algebraic way. Yeah, so 
222 is where we did problems like this thing. Uh, here, the zoom button. Asking you limit questions, yes? Okay, so 22 is more graphical. 23 is more algebraic. Stuff like, uh, yeah, this guy. So without looking at the work, what would you do to do this problem? Did you guys not? Yeah. Multiply by the conjugate, I love it. So we have various methods. If I see a radical expression in my limit question, I think conjugate, right? If I see um, uh, polynomial stuff, I think factor, yes? Okay, I like it. And to be really, really, really honest, let me give you a problem here. What is the absolute first thing I think of when I'm asked to find a limit? So if I have a limit as x goes to one, uh, x squared minus three x over x squared plus six x minus, um, 16. What's the first thing you should do? Nope. I don't even know if I have to do more work. What is it that tells me I have to do more work? If it's an indeterminate. If it's indeterminate. I really want this to make sense. The, the most basic indeterminate form that we know of is what form? Zero, zero. zero over zero. I love this name. Please love this name. Indeterminate means you cannot currently determine the answer. So you got to do extra shit. Is this indeterminate? Can I plug a 1 in? Does anything freak out? What do I get when I plug a 1 in? I get 1 minus 3. Negative 2. Over 7 minus 16. Negative 9. Yeah. So I get two nuts. I'm done. So what is the very first thing you do if I ever give you a limit question? Plug, plug, plug the damn number in, because maybe that's all you gotta do. You only have more work if it currently isn't in a form where you can determine the answer. If it's not indeterminate, that means it's determined. That means I should be able to determine the answer. You guys with me? Yes? Can we get us an example where it's not determinate? Yeah, of course. Um, so I can make it, let's say, limit as x goes to 1 of, sorry, uh, yeah, I got it. Um, yeah, that'll work. Uh, yes, I will. I'm trying to make the problem, sorry. I love you guys so much. Give me a second. Uh, don't, I'm not done with it. Hold on. I'm trying to think ahead. Major trouble. Oh, okay, that'll work. No, Jeff. I'm, I'm making this way too hard myself. Let me just do this. Limit as x goes to zero, x squared minus three x over x squared plus six x. There we go. There's a really easy example. Is that currently indeterminate? Yeah. Why? Zero to zero. So if you get a limit, and when you plug the number in, it's indeterminate. The only indeterminate form we currently know is zero over zero. We're gonna learn some more throughout the semester. If it's that, then you think, what algebra can I do to this? Can I multiply like a conjugate, can I factor, can I, what can I do? So what can I do? Factor, what comes out? And then what cancels? That's right, the problem cancels. The thing that made the top and bottom zero cancels. So then I get one. What the shit does that mean? As the input approaches zero, the output. Yes, as my inputs get close to zero, my outputs close close to negative one half. If I saw the graph of this, all right, let's do this. If you have a graphing calculator, okay. Uh, plug this in. X squared minus three x. So you got to put parentheses around it. Parentheses x squared minus three x. Oh shit! Go back, Jim. Stop it. Stop doing weird things. Divided by 
x squared plus 6x. All right, sorry. Now, let me see. Before you hit graph, can somebody tell me where the vertical asymptote is? Look at me helping you. No, no, it's not a point. It's a, it's a it's line. X, x equals negative 6. Yes. And the horizontal asymptote would be y equals 1, yes. Okay. So what what so where does this result show up? So there's the negative six vertical asymptote, yes, and there's the horizontal asymptote of one. X equals zero. Yeah, now watch this. Alright. If I hit second calc, I can ask it to calculate a value. Let's try to plug in zero. Look what it tells me. What's the output? Yeah. Nothing, because, of course, I can't plug a zero in. There's an open circle there, but we know where the open circle is. It's a negative one half. You guys see what I'm saying? So if I put something in second count value, if I put something in really close to zero, point uh, zero, 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 one, it says one half, because it, it can't resolve it. It's got to kind of round it. You guys know what so what I really love is for you to see, when I try to ask it, tell me what it is at zero, and it, says, it gives me, bam, it gives me a blank spot. What the shit? That just means there's an open circle there. Of course it can't calculate it. I'm not allowed to use zero. This calculator's like, your answer is the unknown. It's like, all right, thanks, all right? But we did the work. We know where the open circle is. It's at negative one half. Okay. Is that all right? You guys, I think you asked for an example. Yeah, that's an example where it's zero over zero. Okay. Um, so, let me ask you this. Yeah, let me show you some pictures. I'm going to skip two four for the moment. Look at two five. What time is it? Yeah. Maybe it's a good idea. You want to take a break? Yeah. All right, let's take a break. Come back at uh, 10 so. I'll give you a 15 minute break. Come back at 10 so. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, just go where you'd like to be. My people are, but I'm going to be an engineer. Oh, all right. Well, in engineering, you would be curious what would happen to a structure as you approach its load. So you'd be curious as to what part would fail first, maybe. Like if it was up to you to engineer something to improve the stability of something, you'd like to know what makes it break down at certain weights. So it'd be less of a mathematical use of limits and more of a uh, testing it out, you know, within a computer simulation, what breaks down first as I approach the, li the weight limit. Does it make sense? Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of a reach, but... Limits are integral parts of proving other things. So engineering is very application heavy, obviously, but it's built on theory. And a lot of those theories require the idea of limits to prove them. You see what I mean? So like I, one semester I actually had a kid that said, how does this class help me buy lettuce at this point? What the shit is that? What do you mean? How does playing a violin help you buy it? Well, maybe you can make money playing violin. Maybe you make money because they're going to teach math. What do you want from me? But of course it's not going to help you with like uh, everyday whatevers. Of course not. But you're not here for everyday whatevers. You guys have got to have some goal that is STEM related, which most people, it's not their everyday. So that's the cool thing about what your goal probably is. It's a goal involving a degree that could lead to jobs that are not people's every day. So your every day will be very different from the majority of people's every day if you get to your goal. Yes? Um, so limits, does that make sense? I mean, how much have you worked with limits before this class? Not at all. Okay, so. I think, did I tell you guys that once you learn calculus, you start, and you take any more math, you're like, how did I do anything before I knew calculus? You don't, I, I would understand if you don't believe me, because you're like, I don't see that one, because you're not there yet. You're in calculus still. 
So just wait. You'll see limits pop up in all of these places because they are so such a tool we need to prove other theorems and other uh, um, what I'm trying to say identities. Yeah. Yes. You mean the supplemental course? Yes. Yes, Monday's on this. Do you need to sign on online or show up? Well, you need to get an authorization. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if you do want to add that course, you have to get an authorization from me. And again, that course is not a homework help session. It is a we go over the prereq skills needed for future concepts you're going to see in this class. Right. Yeah. And it is very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. you those of you who are taking it, I appreciate your patience. This is my first time teaching it, so I'm kind of creating it a little bit as I go. Huh? I have room. Yes. Yes. Twelve thirty to one fifty. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So some pre calculus teachers could have used limits as they taught like horizontal and vertical asymptotes, for example. It was up to your pre-calc teaching. Yeah. I think when I teach pre-calc, I do try to throw some of that in there, uh, but it just depends on how the class is doing, really. How much they can handle beyond our normal concept. Yeah. What's the root number? Uh, 242, I think it's the corner one over there, yeah. It's kind of funny. I gotta look to the people like I don't know. I'm just teaching. What do you want from me? It's like right around. The corner. Yeah, right on the corner. Uh, can you tell me what time? Twelve thirty to one fifty. Every day. Monday, Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. I have two spots, but I will overload to a certain degree. Yes. Okay. Uh, Fifty one. Two, two. Oh, I love this problem. Okay. So not many people know I also have a degree in physics. I've only taught physics like twice, but that's okay. Um, so this is all about as a mass approaches the speed of light, what happens to its, as, as a particle approaches the speed of light, what happens to its mass? So why can't we just make things accelerate to the speed of light, correct? We're not in Star Trek where it can hit warp 10 or whatever. Huh? It's a limit. Yeah. So as my speed, what's the letter C? Speed of light. Speed of light. C is the speed of light. So the question is, what happens? Guys. What happens is my speed, my velocity, approaches the speed of light. And notice I put a little, they put a little negative here. Why has it got to be that way? Can you approach the speed of light from above the speed of light? No. No, speed of light is essentially the speed limit of the universe, right? That is, uh, I won't get into it. There are theories where that's not exactly true, but we'll leave it at that. So really all this says is calculate the limit as V goes to C. Well, if V equals C, what is this? Zero. I mean, this part here. Oh, one. one. So you get what on the bottom? Zero. Zero. And this is positive, yes? <laughs> Can't have negative mass, at least not in the problem we're looking at. So what's a finite amount divided by zero? No, undefined. Undefined, but be more specific. As the bottom gets smaller and smaller, do you all agree with me? If I'm not moving at all, what's this? If I'm not moving at all, what's this? If I am not moving at all, this is, what's my velocity if I'm not moving? Zero. So what's the bottom? One. So if I'm not moving, my mass is my mass. If I start to move, my velocity is not zero, but how, how is it compared to the speed of light? How's my velocity compared to the speed of light? Small. It's stupid small, so it's effectively not doing shit to me. When do I actually start to see the effects of this when it actually gets start getting stupid fast, right? You guys semi with me, huh? Oh, <laughs> so uh, speed of light is three times 10 to the sixth kilometer meters per second? Yes. Roughly. 
It's actually 2.9 and whatever. Yeah. And also, anyway, you gotta talk about the medium. Anyway, let me stop for a second. So you all agree that for any velocity, this is positive, correct? And as the velocity approaches the speed of light, the bottom goes to zero. Does the bottom ever get to zero? Because we the limit, I'm never getting to the speed of light. But I am taking my mass and dividing it by something that's smaller and smaller and smaller. So then the answer is going to be positive infinity. That's weird. If I want to accelerate a mass to the speed of light, the effective mass becomes infinite. Therefore, the power required to accelerate it to the speed of light becomes infinite. Okay, trippy. It's also the last problem of the thing, so that's okay. Uh, let me stop for a minute. Of course, Star Trek gets around because they make a bubble around it. Like, I got a bubble around me, so I don't matter. You know. If you guys don't like Star Trek, I understand. I'm a geek, so it's too bad. Uh, let me do this. All right. I'm going to summarize some stuff for us. I'm also going to fill in some gaps before we get to 2 5. Um, to make sure that I've missed. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. I don't care about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here we go. Perfect. Um, so we have a graphical idea of limit. So I can give you a problem, and this should look very familiar. If I give you this kind of problem, I can ask you what's the limit, all right? I mean, this kind of problem, like the handout we did. So if this is four, and this is negative one, and this is three, what's the limit as x goes to four of f of x? Three. 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 Why does the limit exist? From both sides, I love it. It's the same from both sides. But what is f of four? Three, or no, no four. Negative, one. One. negative one, good. So this question has no idea what's happening anywhere else except at four, and this question has no idea what's happening at four. That's why they can have very different answers, maybe. So that's one of the first things we looked at was when we just started investigating the limits by themselves, we looked at the visual representation. Then we talked about an algebraic representation. Oh, this is a great example of, of me not thinking very much. There we go again. Okay. So now that I made that change, is this the right form for me to start doing stuff? Yeah. What's the top if I plug a four in? Zero. Zero? Yeah. What's the bottom if I plug a four in? Zero. So is this the right form where I want to do why is everybody saying no? Is this indeterminate? Yes. 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 So can I determine the answer currently? No. So how do I determine the answer? I must do stuff. So let me ask the question again. Is this the right form for me to have to do stuff? Yes. 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 What do I have to do? So for everybody said yes, I love it, but I had a lot of people going like this. This is currently in this form, yes? Yes. Good. Thank you. <laughs> He's like, how many times? <laughs> how many times, Jeff? So then you factor the top, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to spend a ton of time on this. So, all right. Bam. And then I get eight. Woohoo! And now we understand the connection between these two. At the point four, eight, I would put what? Open, open circle. Okay. So I have a picture that has an open circle. I can determine what the limit is. I can determine the limit so I can figure out where the open circle goes. So graphically, and algebraically, that's the connection. Maybe, maybe? Yeah. Okay, a little bit, whatever, Jeff. So you could have to use conjugates here, you could have to use factoring. Uh, you could have to do uh, uh, combining fractions like we did on that one problem. Okay. So some kind of algebraic business has happened when I see this. Then I've got the very hyper computational heavy actually figure out what the limit as x goes to something of an expression. Um, can I factor this? No. no. So that wouldn't help me. So how do I calculate this limit? I make a table of values, right? And what would I put in for x? 
No. All right, 4.2, 4.1, 4.05, 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, 4.10, 4.11, 4.12, 4.13, 4.14, 4.15, 4.16, 4.17, 4.18, 4.19, 4.20, 4.
We love you, Jim. Okay. So let me ask you this. What do you think of if I ask you to graph something that's continuous? Oh. What comes to mind? If I want you to graph something that is continuous. Arrows on both ends. On both lines. No. Arrows. Arrows. Doesn't arrows need any arrows. Nope. Don't lift up your pencil. Don't down. lift up your writing utensil. That's a, that's a good kind of hand wavy way to define it. I love it. Doesn't stop. A line that has no Okay, it doesn't stop and pick back up, right? So let me do this. What's discontinuous? How can I graph something that's discontinuous? So let's say I start here and I start going. What would I have to do to be discontinuous? Pick up the thing. Think of whatever you're writing. So this is like I teleported somewhere, right? This is discontinuous. If I refer back to the hand wavy, uh, but still valid uh, way to define it, I had to pick up my pen. Correct. Uh, what about this picture? Is this discontinuous? No. no. Can my car drive that road without any issues? No. no. I am in Florida, and the entire road is a sinkhole, yes? Florida doesn't go up, it goes down. Yeah, sorry. I did my time in Florida, so I can talk about it. This is discontinuous because I have to actually pick up to go across the, the hole. So continuous means, okay, you ready for it? Here's the definition of continuity. What's, what's the problem here? What's the limit? Does the limit exist at whatever the shit this is? Let's say it's A. Does the limit exist at A? No. no. What about this one? Does the limit exist? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but what's wrong with this one? What's f of a? Undefined. So what if I define it to be here? The city council said, oh, there's a pothole. Let me fix it. And what did they do? They dumped a bunch of, sh a bunch of shit on the side of the road. And we're all like, close. OK. <laughs> did that fill in the problem? No, but still discontinuous. If only I would have put that damn thing there. So what? has to happen? What's one thing that must happen? Why is this one not as bad as this one? Because at least in this one, the limit exists. So in order to be continuous, in order to be continuous, the limit as x goes to a of f of x must exist. And the way I'll say that is the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals L, where L is some finite number. Yes? If I say the limit of x of a, as x goes a of f of x is infinity, that is a specific way it doesn't exist. Because it never gets there. So it's just a way of saying it doesn't. But it's a specific way to say it does not exist. You guys with me? So it needs that. So this was out. This had no chance. The city can't fill in the hole and save this road. The road, this was a horrible engineering mistake. So they need your help. So there's no way. It's like you gotta, you know, just have a small enough car. You guys your friends have a little beetle and you all pick it up and you go across the walk and then you can pick it. No, it's back, it's back. Here, could they have fixed the problem? Yeah. If only they would have freaking put the damn shit in the hole, right? Then they could have fixed the problem, yes? Yep. Okay, so this is closer. So it does meet, the limit does exist, but what is, what's this problem this guy has? The, what's the second condition? Uh, it's undefined. Yeah, the function's gotta be defined, but not only, now is it defined? Yeah. But it's still prominent. So it not only exist. the function has to be defined, but the function value must equal the the limit. Okay, I like it. I can't remember, the book says this in like three steps or something. They're crazy. So screw it. To be really honest, all I have to say is this. The limit as x goes to a of f of x is f of a. That means the limit exists and it's equal to the function value there. How would I change this so it actually meets those? I would pick that up and I put it there. Is it now can I drive that road without stopping or freaking out or dying? Turn around. Yes, I can do it. So what kind of discontinuity is this? Were we able to remove the problem? 
if I just fill the hole in? Yes. So this kind of discontinuity, this kind right here, is called a removable discontinuity, blah, 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 removable disk. Sounds terrible, not a good search. That's a removable discontinuity, because if I just fill in the hole, the problem's gone. I've removed the problem. What do you think I call the first type of discontinuity? Let me draw it again. What about this one? Non-removable. Yeah, it's a type of non-removable, but let's give it its own name. What does the function do? It's coming along, yeah, and then it jump. 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 That's a jump discontinuity. Jump discontinuity. Okay. There's one more main type of discontinuity I have not put up here yet. So we got that removable is pretty easy. If you just fill in the hole, you can remove the problem. This one, it jumps. That's a nice, I mean, that one's hard to forget. It jumps, literally. And the other kind of discontinuity you can have Oh, Kano. No, it's called the, uh, um, What happens here? Yeah, this is an infinite discontinuity. It's not really a jump. It's definitely not removable. So it's, we just call it an infinite discontinuity. Because I have to lift my pen for sure, right? Uh, why infinite Say again, sir. Uh, why? why? Uh, infinity, discontinuity. Infinity, yes? Yeah, why is it a discontinuity? Why is it a discontinuity? Okay, so if I drive a car along this road, can I go to this point? Can I get to that point? No. Never. Never. You can't cross. Because I'm going to go to infinity first, right? So I can't get from this side to that side, so there must be a discontinuity here. So if I'm driving a car, in this situation, can I get from this side to that side? No, it's a big ass hole there. Can't do that shit. If I'm driving a car in this situation, I got even bigger problems. Maybe over here I can get a Jeep or something to go around it. But here I'm screwed. But again, maybe I can get a Jeep or whatever. You guys kind of look like that? It's not a commercial for a Jeep, by the way. So. How you guys feel about that? The idea of continuity is not only does it have to look like the function is getting somewhere, but it actually has to get there. So it adds one layer. How could I have a limit exist? From both directions, it must approach the same thing. What one thing do I add on top of that for continuity? It actually gets there. It looks like it's going there, and it gets there, so I can fill the damn thing in. Let me stop for a minute. Yes. Totally. Okay. I need you to understand. I love this question because we kind of focus so much on using limits to investigate weird shit. Um, what if I have this function here? Yes? Can anyone tell me anything about that function? Line. I love it. Continuous, sure, but tell me something more algebraic about it. The y-intercept is two. two. The slope is four. Four. Let me make this two, four, six, eight. So let me get rid of that. So it's two, and then it goes up four over one. Yes. Okay. So what is the limit as x goes to one of this? Six. Three, six. So does there have to be a problem somewhere in order to use a limit on it? No. In this case, it just happens to be something I didn't need to use a limit for, because I can get there. I can, it's fine. I can just plug limit as x goes to 1 of 4x plus 2. Is that equal to 4 times 1 plus 2? Yes. Yes, because this is continuous through there. So if my function is continuous through a point, that means the limit can be evaluated by just plugging the number in. That's what we've been doing, to be honest. We, what kind of functions are continuous? That's a good question. Parabola. What'd you say? Parabolas. Parabolas. I love it. Now be more, more general. A parabola is a type of what? Also starts with a P. Polynomial. So polynomials are definitely continuous. 
They are the nicest functions around. They look like Loch Ness Monster sometimes, but they're the nicest freaking functions around. Yes? They are very much continuous. Let me freak you guys out a little bit. What about rational functions? What the shit is a rational function? And the top thing. So it's a ratio of, of uh, polynomial functions. Rational functions are continuous on their domain. So let me ask you, is there a discontinuity? Are there any discontinuities just looking at this function total? What are the two discontinuities at what x values? X equals zero and two. not two, four. four. If you factor the bottom, you get x times x minus four, zero and four. What is this guy's domain though? Everything except zero and four. Zero and four. So let me ask you, it, it, does it have any just other discontinuities besides those two? No. So is this function continuous on its domain? If I only consider its domain, is it continuous? Yes. So rational functions are continuous on their domain. So let me just show you the theorem here, just to get to the point. These theorem, I'm sorry, these functions are all continuous at every number in their domain. Polynomials, rational functions, root functions, trig functions. <laughs> Logarithmic functions have issues, but everywhere they exist, it's continuous, correct? Has an issue at zero. But if you don't include zero, it's perfectly fine. It has, I don't have to lift up my pen to do this. Yes? Okay, I like it. Trig functions, same way. Doesn't tangent have issues? Yeah. We talked about cotangent earlier. Tangent's got a, an infinite number of asymptotes, but on its domain, it looks like a little cube dude. It looks like a little cube dude. It's perfectly fine on its domain. Well, one level, as a student, should be saying, well, yeah, if I ignore every problem, then it's fine. That's basically what it's to say. <laughs> the only problems this has is that zero and four, if you ignore those, because those are not in its domain, it's okay everywhere else. It's perfectly fine. Yes? If you were to get a question like that, um, do you have to uh, specify the, their domain? Like, oh, the uh, depends on the question asked. It could say, Identify the domain on which this is continuous or something. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember if there's a problem exactly like that, but there's something like that. So let me give you this. Uh, oh, Jesus. Let's see. All right. Can somebody please tell me if that is continuous? So these two separate parts of this function are both continuous on their domain and domain are no longer numbers. That does not answer my question. Is that function continuous? Where's the one place it could be discontinuous? Do you all agree each piece? Beautiful. Tier, right? The only place that could be discontinuous is at the handoff. The Olympics, you're like, all right, come on. And then the person's over there. Right, so you want the baton to hand off. So how do you check that? Does that make sense, by the way? I love that analogy. The handoff. The handoff is happening in negative one. Do the functions, are they at the right place? When you plug a negative one into the first dude, are you allowed to? No. No, No, but we do. So I know where the open circle goes, right? So when I plug a negative one in, what do I get? What's negative one squared? Negative three. One minus four is negative three. When I plug a negative one in here, what do I get? Negative one minus two is negative three. So is this function continuous? If I made this a three, is it continuous? No. no, good, okay, so be careful. Don't look at the individual parts. You must start with that, but don't only do that. Each of these are cool, great. The only place left is do they hand off correctly? Do they look like this or do they look like this? Ah, this is good, it's not so good, yes? Maybe, maybe. 
Yes. So it's discontinuous at negative one. No, this is continuous everywhere. Because at negative one, this is negative three, and this is negative three. Yes? If I so this is an open circle in negative three, correct? And then this one fills that circle in. So then it's fine. Yes? What if I be able to tell if it was con or continuous because x is greater than or equal to 1 or negative 1, the bottom there? But that doesn't mean anything. I don't understand. So um, what about this one? Uh, g of x equals sine x, x greater than 5 over 2, tangent x, x less than or equal to 5 over 2. Are these two good? Yeah. Yes. Well, at pi over two, what's true? Maybe a little more careful here. Okay, there we go. And let me be even more careful here. Okay. I don't know if you guys remember the asymptotes for tangent and negative pi over two pi. I sort of gave away the answer. So are, are both of these good? Yes, because they're continuous on their domain. And they're only bad at odd multiples of pi over two. That's where they have asymptotes, yes? So both, and sine is cool. Sine is, looks like a polynomial, for all intents and purposes, kind of. Kind of. What's sine of pi over two? One. And what's tangent of pi over two? Infinite, undefined, yes. So this is obviously discontinuous. I like it. So it has nothing to do with what these are. It has everything to do with do they match? Do the outputs match at those locations, right? Yeah, I like it. All right. One more. Still tricky, but let's see if you guys pick up on the trick. So now, if you focus on three, what do you get when you plug a three in here? One third. One third. What do you get when you plug a three in here? One third. But the it's not good enough. If you say this is continuous, you are wrong. You are wrong. But I tricked you. Because what was what should I start with? What should I? What did I start with? With every other problem we did. Are right, both of these cool? Considering what I'm allowing to put in there. Is this guy cool for x less than 3? No. You sure? Where is this guy bad? X equals 0. Ah, shit. So is this function continuous? No, because it includes 0. No good. Did the handoff work? Yeah. Yes, but then this guy gets all weird at 0. It's like the race started and somebody teleported from freaking Mars. And you're like, uh, I don't think this allowed. Instant teleportation. Yes? Yeah, so H is discontinuous because 1 over X is discontinuous at 0. Yes? Yes? So 1 over X isn't a rational function? No, it is rational. So 1 over X is continuous on its domain. But H of X says it's 1 over X for X less than 3. At 0, that's discontinuous. Yes. So it's sort of like if I said, is 1 over x continuous on its domain, you'd say yes. If I said, is 1 over x continuous at 0, you'd say no. So since it's involved 0 going in, it's discontinuous. Then. I like it. So you must look at the pieces, and then you must look at the handle. Okay, I like it. I like it. So let me give you this. Everyone is saying printed about 78 billion copies of this.
Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I said it. I so since the look this way, look this way, it flows from the negligent line. So my guess for the slope is negligent. Because that's the pattern I see. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. Okay. Look at the continuity side. Don't look at the other side unless you want to be freaked out. Did I get you guys? <laughs> like with limits, continuity is built on limits. The more you understand limits, the more you'll understand continuity. I could have started with this picture and just asked you the first day, where do you think this is discontinuous? You could have probably given me some good answers. So now we know a little bit more here. Where's the first place this is discontinuous? Yeah, minus three. And negative three. Eleven. What is it? Do I say... Yeah, so at x equal negative 3, what's the type? Good, jump. Where's the next place is discontinuous? 3. Now, this is a little bit trickier. Yeah, I would understand if you call it an infinite jump. See that? That would be fine. But kind of infinity kind of overrules everything. But I would call this like an infinite jump. Because this side is cool, right? This side is freaky. So it is kind of like an infinite jump. Are you guys kind of with me? So it's kind of a mixture. Because one side it's nice, the other side it goes down a well and doesn't stop. So I call this an infinite jump. If you call it an infinite discontinuity, I would be okay with that. Where's the next place it's discontinuous? And what kind of discontinuity is that? Removable. Removable. Did somebody attempt to remove it? Yeah. Or did they, did they succeed? No. Obviously not. Yeah. Again, they dumped the stuff on the side of the road. Close enough for government work. Fill it in with your pencil and it's removed. <laughs> I don't like your problem, Jeff. I'm making that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Is everybody okay with that? That's not too bad. The names go along with the sh what they look like. So you, that you can't beat that. Mathematicians, we don't always do that. We don't pick the best names all the time. Um, now, number two, do you see what kind of problem this is, number two? It's the same as number one, just backwards. I'm giving you all the necessary information to construct it, and then I want you to make the picture. Holy shit. So what I would do, do you have definite things you can grab? Yeah, the three points. Start there. Put those bad boys down. You know those exist. Yes? Okay, so graph those. So I'm going to graph negative 3, 2. I'm going to graph 0, 0. I'm going to graph 2, negative 1. So those I know for sure. Don't make a line through those. That's bad. You might have required. The next thing says, as I approach 2, as my, limit, as my inputs approach 2, the outputs approach 0. Did I just tell you where to put an open circle? Yeah. Where did I tell you to put an open circle? 2, 0. Two, zero. So my, limit, my inputs approach 2, and the limit should be 0. But do you see why it's got to be an open circle? Because it could be closed, but why do I know it's an open circle here? Because it's, it's already defined it to. Not because it's a limit, because it's already defined it to. I can't make it closed. Yes? Oh, yeah, then this would have said, um, where am I at? This would have said f of 2 equals 0. Yeah, it would have filled the whole way. But it didn't. Now, something else I would do for myself. This limit is from which side? Both sides. Trick Both question. Sides. Both sides. So you can kind of do this for yourself. A little tiny. So you know whatever you're going to do, it's got to come from both sides, yes? I'm not going to go very far because I don't know what else is going on yet. 
What about this? What the shit? What kind of asymptote? Vertical. Vertical. So at five, I got this well. And the fact that the limit is not dependent on what? What am I? Direction. That means for both sides it has to. Yes. So I got kind of a. Let me look through real quick. Nothing else is around this area. Do you see what I mean? Nothing else is involving this area, so I feel comfortable doing this. Yeah. Because it's got to go deep down. It's approaching. It's getting really, really big negative outputs. And nothing else is happening on this side, so I'm good on that side. So I can do it. So this is not the answer. This is one answer. So it's really trippy when I give this problem on a test or something because I can get as many people as wrong and get that many answers. It's just that the, this has to look like this. This has to be here. You know what I mean? You could have made this go wobble wobble. You could have made it just be a straight line almost. I mean, you could do whatever you want. Okay, so does it have to go like so? Yes. Yeah. No, 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 because it's going to negative infinity. It could not do this because then that would be positive. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. What's it doing at zero? What's this mean? From the right, I must go to negative one. So from the right, that means over here, right? I have to approach negative one. But from the left, I must approach one. The actual value matches up with the limit on the last one. On the last one, I'll kick ass. So like dude sound, sorry, I don't know people's names yet. No, you What's your name again? Yusuf. As Yusuf just said, sorry, I called you dude. As Yusuf just said, the limit going to negative three is two, but what's the function value at negative three? Freaking two! So we finally have one that's continuous through a point that's identified, right? So now, where am I gonna start from though? Here, here, or here? Here. Last Bottom, one. middle, or top? Top. top. Yeah, so, so that the limit as I go from below, or I'm sorry, from the left has to be negative, has to be one, so I must be going this way. So I've got to approach this. And then from here, you can either be boring and make it a straight line, or you can make it do weird shit, or you can make it go, or whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a function, right? As long as you don't come back on yourself. So my point with all this weird shit is there's, in, there's so many answers I could accept. You guys would be yes. Does the line on the right of the vertical asymptote at x equals five even have to be there at all? Yes. No? This is a good question. I love that question. Can somebody identify? His question is, do I even need this here at all? Can anyone tell me why I must have this? It doesn't have to look like this. So you can show that it approaches. Because it from says both sides. from the so right and the left. Because they have to go from both sides, yes. So if you did not put something here, you would lose points. Because that would not match up with this guy. Both sides have to be going to negative infinity, yes? Beautiful. Kick ass. Is that a difficult problem? You can see how you have to be careful. Don't go too far with shit, because then you might run into something that's supposed to do something else. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Here's an example of a problem we did earlier. All right, so anyone see a problem right off the bat? What's the first thing you look at? Yeah, you look at the functions that's composed of. Where's the middle have a problem? Zero. Yeah. Where x equals zero is discontinuous. So I'm going to say x not equal to zero, right? Any of the other functions have an issue? This would have an issue if I were using inputs that were less than one. Do you see that? But my inputs are specifically straight equal to one, so I'm good. So what do I have to check next? Handoff. So negative one, when I plug it in here, I get negative one. Negative one, when I plug it in here, I get negative one. This handoff check, yes? Those functions, one reached out and the other one gave it the baton. Beautiful. Little tier, they're gonna get at least silver. What about this handoff? 
When I plug a one in, I get one. one. When I plug a one in, I get oh shit. So where else is it discontinuous? Okay. Why am I putting not equal to? Because my question was where is it continuous? So x not equal to zero, x not equal to one. Yes? Is that under the root, it can, I mean, it can lack equal zero? No, as long as my input is not less than one. If I have a number I plug in that's less than one, doesn't this become imaginary? But my inputs are all greater than equal one. I'm good. This is fine. Right. I mean, why did you write anything from one? Oh, because. When I plug a 1 in here, I get 1. When I plug a 1 in here, I get 0. So there will be an open circle at 1, 1, and a closed circle at 1, 0. That's a discontinuity. So if, if these don't match, then they don't connect. And so they're discontinuous at that point. So then it would be continuous from negative 1 to 1. So, well, no, at, at 0, it's not continuous. Because 1 over x. So then negative 1 to 0. Negative 1 to 0, it's fine. Yeah. And then 0 to 1, it's fine. And then 1 to infinity, it's fine. How do you justify your conclusion? Well, this is where you would write what I said. You would plug negative 1 in, so like at x equal to negative 1, right? You would say. Um, would say like here this x is negative 1 but 1 over negative 1 not but and so this is why that's good because they agree the outputs agree so if I put a negative 1 in the top and I put a negative 1 in the middle they agree the open circle for the top I'm sorry for the middle gets filled in by the top they have the same output yeah so when we say where it is continuous do we say like all x values excluding Oh, yeah, yeah. So where is this continuous? Everywhere except 0 and 1. Yes. I like it. So let me ask you this question. What's the limit as x goes to 1 of g of x? What's the limit as x goes to 1 of g of x? I'm gonna, let me be careful. Let me be a little more careful. From the, the left. What's the limit as x goes to 1 from the left? Which function are you going to use then? If I'm approaching 1 from the left, which function gets turned on? 1 over x. 1 over x, yeah. Right? So what's the limit as I approach 1 from the left? 1. When you plug a 1 in, what do you get? 1. So the limit of this is 1. What's the limit as x approaches 1 from the right? What am I using now? I'm using numbers bigger than 1, correct? So which function am I using? No. Bigger than 1. From the right of 1 is bigger than 1, correct? So I'm using the bottom dude, and when I plug a 1 in there, I get 0. So here's a very technical way to justify your conclusion about uh, 1. Why is this discontinuous? Because what's it take to be continuous? The limit must first exist. Does this limit exist? No. Nope. The limit as x goes to 1. What's the limit as x goes to 1? Does it exist? No. No. Because they go to different places. Okay. So there's a hyper technical way to explain using the definition of continuity why it's discontinuous. So on a test or a quiz, if I say explain this using the definition of continuity, that's what you have to show me. Because what's it take to be continuous? Two main things. The limit has to exist, and it must equal the function value there. Not only does it have to look like it's going somewhere, it has to actually get there. Okay. Cool. Yes? We use the second one for um, x is approaching 1 from the left because the top one is also continuous. Well, again, if I'm approaching 1, I'm getting close to 1. That is very far away from 1. So I'm in here somewhere. I'm getting close to one, so I'm going to use this guy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you said that to 
also be a function, a uh, uh, continuous. So we need to limit and you say two things that we need to. Yes, there's two things. The limit has to exist, and it must equal the function value there. The limit must to be the limit must exist, so it must agree from both sides. And instead of an open circle, it's got to be closed to a limit. It has to actually get there. A lot of things. So jump discontinuous is no good because the limit doesn't exist. A removable is no good because the limit exists, but the function isn't defined there. Okay. Oh, let's see what time is it. Oh my god, this is the latest I catch you. Oh my god, you guys are so spoiled. Okay. <laughs> so look at this guy. Now I'm getting into some more computational stuff. So this is an example of a problem where you have to know what it looks like. We already talked about natural log. What is the inside approaching as I approach two? Zero. No, no. The inside zero. is approaching zero. 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 Does it ever get there? No. Good. That's the whole idea of limit. So what is the natural log of this doing as the inputs approach zero? We talked about this earlier. What's the natural log look like? Negative, negative, negative infinity, exactly. So, again, if it's been a while since you took pre-calc, one big thing you want to get down is what do all the basic functions look like? What does ln look like? What do the trig functions look like? What does x squared look like? x cubed look like? What does f2 value look like? All the kind of stuff. You've got to know the basic forms of the functions. These kind of questions are then easy. What did I just say? Negative infinity. What about this guy? What do you think is a good first step here? And I want to point something well, out. No, if you plug first. a 3 in, if you plug a 3 in, you do get 0 over 0, correct? Okay. So again, check first. So what do I get when I factor this? I get x times x minus 3 over? Good. Is that all right? So what cancels? One x minus three. One x minus three. Now, 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 now the problem starts. That was all a little baby shit. We can factor and kill. Yay. If I approach three, this becomes zero. But if I approach three from below, isn't that going to be less than three minus three? Isn't that negative? But I'm approaching three from above. Or let me say it this way, I'm sorry, I always say above and below and that gets people confused. From the right, yes? That means every x value I'm plugging in to evaluate this would be bigger than three, correct? So wouldn't this whole thing then be negative or positive? Now, if I get really close to three, this gets really close to zero. So this whole thing gets really close to, or not close to, but this whole thing gets big. You with me? It's always positive, and it's getting really big. So what's the limit? Positive It's always positive, and it's getting really big. Positive infinity. How is it always positive? Because what kind of numbers am I allowed to plug in? Am I allowed to plug in 2.9? No, am I allowed to plug in 3.1? Yes, I'm allowed to plug in things above 3. So this is always positive. If this would have been 3 minus x, then the answer would have been negative infinity. Because that would have been 3 minus something bigger than 3. That's negative. But the whole thing's getting big. Negative infinity. But this is positive. And then this looks very familiar. Almost. Didn't we do cotangent? Yeah. 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 Well, what's, it's the same thing. What's cosecant? 1 over sine. 1 over sine. What's the sign of pi? Pi. What's sign look like? This is the last thing we'll do, by the way. Forever. Zero. Entirely. No. What does sign look like? I love you guys. Where does it start here? Zero. 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 All right. So as I approach, where's pi on this? It's hard to answer, but pi is second halfway to second. the far left. It's right here, yes. Yeah. It's like in there. So where am I, how am I approaching pi? Am I, am I? They're getting closer to zero. From this side or that side? 
Oh, you're from going the right, the right side. Right. So what's true about the sign? Is that it's, it's going to... It's, it's approaching zero. It's approaching zero, right? Yep. And that's all. But so what's true about cosecant then? But, so well, let me ask you again. What's true about sign? It is always negative, negative here, yes? Yes. And it's approaching zero. <laughs> what's true about lesser? What's true about cosecant? It's and always it's negative and it's approaching one over zero, which is infinity. So I get negative infinity times pi, which is negative, negative infinity. So when you have infinite answers, you have to take a second and make sure which infinity is it. If I know the bottom is going to zero, is it always positive or is it always negative? That tells me if it's positive infinity or negative infinity. It's not good enough to just go it's infinity because the bottom would be zero. No, it's not good enough. Which infinity? You said that little sign. Hmm? What do you go for sign? I graph sine, okay, and then, and then we had to think about 1 over it to make it cosecant. That's why if yeah. sine's going to 0, so cosecant's going to infinity, but it was always negative. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm like, I am staring at them like negative infinity. Ah. I understand. All right, guys.